customers I talk to are in the middle of a digital transformation. They all have to store, wrangle, and analyze larger and larger amounts of data uh, from a variety of data sources. Many have chosen Google Cloud for these purposes, and many, many are already running typical Spotfire on Google Cloud or are planning to run typical Spotfire on Google Cloud together with their data. Google BigQuery is the enterprise data warehouse for Google Cloud. It's designed for business analytics, it's feature rich, easy to use and cost effective um, given that it scales from a few gigabytes to multiple petabytes. Um, this is also why I see Spotfire customers moving their on-premises data warehouses to um, BigQuery. And this is also why it's important for TIPCO as an independent provider of the BI platform TIPCO Spotfire to, to provide native support and built-in support for analytics on top of Google BigQuery. In today's video, we're going to look at uh, Spotfire's built-in integration with Google BigQuery. Uh, an integration introduced in Spotware 10.4, uh, June 2019. So, before you first start analyzing Google BigQuery data in Spotware, there are a few things you need to prepare in Google BigQuery itself. Um, we have an extensive um, a section in our documentation which helps you get started with uh, everything you need to, to get the integration up and running uh, in as uh, short time as possible. Um, we have um, the system requirements, of course. Um, we have information about the Google account requirements so that you're able to authenticate your users. Uh, we have a complete chapter about billing in Google BigQuery, which is an important aspect of it because Google um, uh, charges you uh, per process byte, which is important to know. And there are some features in Spotify that helps you uh, control uh, and monitor the number of bytes processed. Um, then uh, we could quickly get into the uh, how you connect to BigQuery, which is the description of the Spotify part of the integration. Uh, we have a chapter about repeated columns, which are um, essentially the way uh, Google Analytics data is stored in BigQuery. Uh, so if you're interested in Google Analytics data and Google Analytics analytics through BigQuery, that's an important section to read up on. Um, we also have, of course, uh, a description of all the uh, data types supported by BigQuery, uh, the supported functions, and there are quite a lot of functions supported, which is important because um, functions is essentially what you need and use to uh, do analytic analytics uh, and calculations on top of BigQuery. Um, there's also a section about how you enable Google BigQuery on um, Spotify web clients, uh, the Spotify server. There are a few steps and a few configurations you need to do. If you run Spotify on cloud, uh, you don't need to, to, to do these, of course, they come out of the box, but if you're running Spotify service on premises, this is an important chapter to be aware of. And automating things as Spotify logs in using personal credentials on your web browser. When you automate Spotify to, to do things uh, in the background, you need to use service accounts with Google BigQuery and there is a chapter describing how you do that uh, in combination with automation services and scheduled updates on the uh, Spotify side. All right, so basically read, up, read the documentation. It will make your life easier as you uh, follow along this um, in this video. Google BigQuery is one of currently 53 data sources supported by Spotify natively. Uh, most of these sources uh, support push down queries so you can, based on interactivity uh, your users do with visualizations, filters, etc. Uh, queries will be generated live and pushed down into these data sources and that includes BigQuery of course. So let's Assume that you have Spotware 10.4 or a later release installed and running um, on your Windows machine. Um, what you will see is then when you click the plus sign up here, you click then connect to, you will see the list of all the connectors supporting these three, three sources. Um, if 
we search, we will find that we have Google Analytics and Google BigQuery available. Uh, in this video, we're looking at BigQuery. So I'm clicking that one and we can instantly see that um, the connector allows you to log in using your Google account. So click the sign in with Google button and that will launch your system web browser. Um, if you're already logged into Google, maybe you're using the console or other Google services like Gmail, uh, you will probably already be uh, authenticated. So you just need to select your an account if you're using multiple accounts. You also need to allow Spotify to access your Google data. Uh, and with that, uh, you're logged in. Then we are, there are other key features. Uh, the first one is a billing project. So as I said previously in the video, um, BigQuery charges you for a process bytes and those charges, those uh, queries need to be billed to a certain project. And you can select that in the billing project selector here um, and talk to customers. It's, um, it's, it, it looks like it's common to have one billing project for development and another billing project for production. For example, your marketing team may want to uh, be billed for the analysis files they, they are running in production, but not for the actual development cost. In this case, I'm selecting Spotter Development as my billing project. The next question uh, or choice you need to, to answer is uh, if you would like to enable uh, repeated columns or not. Uh, once again, this is common with Google Analytics data. Uh, it could also be uh, common with other use cases. Um, there's also a direct link where you can read up on um, the details when it comes to this type of uh, columns. Because Spotify will behave a little bit different uh, when these, these are used. And the third option is show public data or not. Maybe you would like to play around with some of the extensive collection of uh, public data provided by Google. Uh, click that uh, button and that will be made available for you in the um, um, in the next dialogue here. Keep in mind that if you are using public data, it takes it could take a while to load those tables uh, because Google provides a lot of public data for you to play around with and uh, to get familiar with BigQuery. Um, if you're not interested, there is a preference so so that you can remove this option so that end users simply don't have the option of using public data. Um, and you can of course also not check that uh, checkbox if you're only interested in your own organization's data. We have our list of data tables available. Uh, as you can see, the list is fairly long. Uh, in this demo, I'm focusing on one of the sample data sets called Air Quality Annual Summary. So I'm adding that to my view, uh, which means it's part of the connection to BigQuery and will be visible in Spotify. And this is what I'm basing my analysis upon. I also wanted to highlight that we support partitions, Google BigQuery partitions, which is a way to basically partition data into different partitions based on uh, date times. So you can do that on ingestion time and you can do it on any other date time column you have. Um, keep in mind that doing it on ingestion time could introduce a risk that certain events that you collect may end up in the in the wrong partition uh, if the event comes in a bit a little bit late. So events can be late, stored later, and then BigQuery will of course put it in a partition where the, that event actually doesn't belong because the event itself wasn't generated um, during that um, time frame. So keep that in mind if you're using partitions based on ingestion date. Maybe you prefer to use another date of when the actual event took place. Uh, Spotify has a pretty neat feature that allows you to, um, to use these partition tables uh, and Spotify will basically automatically rate parameters for you. So you will have prompts. So you will be prompted to enter a from date time and a to uh, date time. Uh, so when your um, when your end users are using the analysis file, they will be requested to add um, a time frame, which will select a few partitions and reduce the bytes processed, which is important for speed, uh, but also for cost um, process bytes cost. So 
So use partitions, uh, use partitions with clustering uh, underneath if you would like to take it even further and sort data according to uh, additional columns. Um, use that, use the partition filter, uh, use um, the automatically created prompts. Uh, in this demo, we are looking more at the air quality annual summary data set. Uh, just to mention, we have relations, of course. Um, you can create relations between your tables and BigQuery. You can create your own custom query, uh, custom SQL towards BigQuery if you prefer that. Um, we have support for primary keys. You can define your own prompts in addition to prompts generated when using partition tables. Uh, with that, Let's click continue and we will see that we have BigQuery added to my summary view. This is spot for a tense view that allows you to review what, what data you're about to add. Uh, here we can see that you have some data loading settings available. You can import data, you can define on-demand data loading of data from BigQuery and you can keep the data external, which means queries will be pushed into BigQuery. Um, a lot of our customers are using very large data sets in BigQuery and prefer to keep data in BigQuery and not copying those rows into Spotify. And uh, that's what I will do in this demo as well, use the external option and push down queries. All right, um, once connected, when we have read the metadata, uh, Spotify tells us that our data is ready. We will see that we have everything we need when it comes to columns in uh, the data panel, and we're ready to start analyzing our data. If we go to the source view, we can see that we have our, our data source here. We have the final data table here, and we're able to do some data wrangling here um, if we prefer that. So one example could be to simply add a calculated column. In this case, let's do something slightly more uh, cool. Um, we have a, a column called sample duration, which is a string column. And with a small uh, regular expression, we we're able to remove all the characters and only keep the numerical values from, from this column. And we can also cast the column from um, a string to integer. Um, let's look at the preview of this expression just to make it easier to explain what we're doing. As you can see, the result after our expression is 24 instead of 24 uh, space hour. And we can see that we have some additional examples over here. So this is, this is just an example of, of the powerful functions available in BigQuery. You can do a lot of data wrangling, you can do a lot of cleansing using custom expressions uh, like this one. And uh, we can give the column a name, duration, um, for example. And then we can see that we have an additional badge added. Uh, we can see that we have um, a new calculated column over here. We can go in and edit it if we need to uh, through the source view. Um, if we go back to the data panel, we can see that we now have a new, a new column available. Uh, let's see. So let's search instead, which is much quicker. Sample duration new. All right. So let's use that. Let's create, um, why not a bar chart like that. Let's put something on the categorical axis, maybe county, county code, county name. Let's put state name, let's change order like that and then use our new calculated column on the numerical axis like that maybe we would have preferred to have the bars horizontally so it's easier to read categorical values like that and we can also create a hierarchy of these two uh, columns added a hierarchy means it's easier to um, switch between the higher levels. So we we'll get a slider basically like that. We can also color by something. Why not color by state? 
just to make it a bit more uh, beautiful, like that. All right, so that's basically a very quick way of uh, accessing, connecting, selecting BigQuery data and run some interactive queries on top of it. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, I will leave um, a lot of good links in the description below uh, so that you, so it's easier for you to find the documentation, the system requirements, uh, everything else you need to, um, to connect to BigQuery. Um, not to miss any future videos from uh, the Spotware team, please click the uh, subscription uh, link below and uh, see you again in the next video. Oh,